Welcome back everyone. Just making a short introduction here because most of the work I need to show you is, is behind the light board. So um, what I've got to say here is really, really brief. We're multiplying and dividing exp expressions um, and they generally fall into a couple of situations. Like often they're asking you, there's a lot of multiply signs between the letters and the idea is that we, we work with implied multiplication. So we're lazy as mathematicians. If we don't have to write something, we often won't. So we just might write, instead of 7 times x times y, we just might write 7xy. Okay? What's missing is a multiply sign um, between them. And also, when we're dividing fractions too, uh, I think you need to... Um, for this to work okay you have to have a good sense of being able to cancel down now i know that's a little bit of a struggle when you teach um, fractions separately just with numbers but that skill also applies to cancelling letters and i need to show you that as well and and finally i'll, I'll show you some of the common examples in year seven where where this multiplying and dividing fractions is, is often used in the kind of setups that the, you often see in textbooks and, and I'll help you navigate through that. Okay. Okay, so for this lesson here we're looking at multiplying and dividing expressions, algebraic expressions. And um, I'm just going to start with a couple of little reminders here. Um, and let's just start with some concrete numbers, okay? Uh, I'm thinking here, let's do 10 over 15. <clears throat> and let's set this up as 2 times 5 over 3 times 5. And we can see the common factors here are 5 and they cancel. So uh, this will simplify to uh, 2 over 3. Um, and I think it's really important that our skills for fractions are strong here or if they're not so strong I, I hope that you continue to work on them and improve them so when we multiply I'm just going to be really general here we've got one pronumeral times another pronumeral here and what we tend to write is a b um, and the order doesn't matter so we could have written this as B, A, but I tend to uh, put things in alphabetical order. It, it tends to help me understand what's going on. And just like this example over here where I use some concrete numbers, we can have any number A uh, divided by B, and we, we generally don't use the division sign. We like to set it up as a fraction. So that's why I was saying your uh, skills from fractions are useful here. And let's just try out one example here that why it's uh, useful. Okay, so I'm just going to change the color of my pen here. Maybe choose an orange and... I'm going to set this up 7, this algebraic fraction, if you like, over <clears throat> 21x uh, multiplied by z, whatever they are. We don't know, we've got, we've got an x, y, and a z here, we've got some numbers. Now, understanding just if we could block out all the pronumerals and just deal with the numbers, I see... Uh, with the numbers, there's a common factor of 7, and 7 goes into 7 once, and 7 goes into 21 three times. <clears throat> so, uh, I already know part of my answer, and this is what I would encourage you to do when you're working this way. Uh, just put the numbers, do the numbers first, it's a good way to warm up. <clears throat> and the skills that we're looking at at the very beginning of this video come into play here, we look for common factors and cancel those down. The next thing that we can do is um, 
just like the numbers if we see the same letter above and below the line we can cancel them just being mindful that this is x to the power of 1 and this is x to the power of 1 so um, if there are other powers there we have to apply our index laws and I don't think you're asked to do that at this stage but certainly if we see the same letters and they're raised to the same power being just to the power of 1 we can cancel them just like uh, we did with the numbers but it's really important to remember what we're saying here what we're saying is x goes into x exactly once and I would like you to practice saying that to yourself as you do this work now we've got other pronumerals here we've got y and a z now they're not the same so we can't cancel them at all so we would just write them down um, and finish finish and simplify what we had in front of us here so you're going to hit a lot of questions where you apply these skills and um, <clears throat> I guess what I'm trying to tell you is that the exact same cancelling down skills apply for algebra as they do just any other common factor that you see so let's just try a few questions here and um, we'll spend a lot of time talking about division uh, let's come back to multiplication for a few moments here so if we have 3w times uh, 4w what I would encourage you to do is just multiply the numbers first so 3 times 4 is 12 and we don't write ww what we what we tend to do and I'll just rub that last w out is use our index laws here and say this w times w is the same thing as w squared and that would be our answer and that's where we would stop and leave it like this if we're asked to multiply uh, terms together okay often often the context to, to do a lot of multiplication is um, involves some skills uh, with uh, area okay you often either for example here got a rectangle or some shape and you're given the dimensions as algebraic terms <clears throat> and this may be uh, 3x down here I'm just going to write it on the inside there so we've got two different measurements we don't know what the l actual lengths of these are we've got uh, some prime numerals here that could stand for some some different numbers so the lengths would change depending on the numbers that we've got we're not told any of those things but we were asked to work out the area and that's a simple case of multiplying applying the length and the width so it doesn't matter really matter what which one we tr choose but let's just multiply these guys together and the same deal you just multiply the numbers together and 4 times 3 is 12 and what I generally like to do is write the letters in alphabetical order um, after there so the area here would be 12 x y units squared is what would typically typically write for a question like that so um, I just want to perhaps give you one more example to finish up and um, I'm just going to put a line here maybe draw a box here and we'll, we'll do the work inside the box here and um, for example it's another one of these restaurant type questions where we've got uh, five people going to a restaurant and the bill is uh, $100 and everyone's paying equally so in our in our minds without the algebra what would we do we would set this up as 
um, you know, work it out in their heads and everyone pays this five people. So each person pays, each person uh, pays $20. Okay, but that's not hard to understand. But what maybe, maybe is a little bit more difficult is setting it up algebraically, what they're asking you to do in the question. So the cost, instead of writing cost, I might just use a capital C, often that's the case, equals something. The bill was $100, so we could put 100 over 5, and then we would write uh, $20 as our final answer. And that's a type of thing... Um, they're asking you to do okay and set it out like that with a lot of these questions and the you know the extension of this question is that suddenly suddenly we don't we've got um, we don't know the number of people so we're calling it in okay so in that situation we don't know the cost is a hundred and we might set it up as n because we don't we're not given that value and that's the type of thinking uh, that we're asking you to um, uh, work on. All right.